Yeah, in a way, it's, it's probably easier to talk about what M learning isn't. Um, I think most people are, are slightly misled by the mobile in M learning, and they tend to assume that it's all happening on mobile phones, um, and therefore that it's all text based. So, uh, for example, sending learners a word of the day each day to uh, potentially increase their vocabulary. Uh, when in fact mobile and handheld learning take in a variety of uh, gadgets and a variety of scenarios. So we're not just talking about mobile phones or smartphones, we might also be talking about, for example, games machines like the DS, um, ebook readers like the Kindle, video cameras perhaps like the Flip or the Flip HD, uh, MP3 players and MP3 recorders, uh, digital stills, um, cameras, a variety of, of gadgets which can be brought into play in the, in the mobile and handheld learning uh, sphere. And of course uh, tablet computers such as the iPad or the Samsung Galaxy, all these things come together in mobile and handheld learning. So one of the big myths I think is that it involves um, mobile phones, and of course it can, but it's not exclusively linked to mobile phones. And possibly then the other misconception is that it's all mobile, that all this has to be done on the go, when of course uh, mobile gadgets and mobile and handheld learning can be brought into the classroom. Um, all of the gadgets I mentioned before can be used in the classroom um, to help people in their learning. Um, and maybe I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. In terms of getting started, obviously you need a, a, a gadget or two, and I suspect um, in certainly in most countries now, um, gadgets won't be in short supply. Um, traditionally, of course, we go into classroom and we ask people to turn off things like their mobile phones and put away their gaming consoles, so, so they may be a little bit surprised if you run into the classroom and tell them to get everything out and lay it on the desk. Uh, but one way of getting started is to find out exactly what your learners have. So um, some of them will have perhaps smartphones, some will have ordinary mobile phones, some of them may have video cameras or, or stills cameras, they may be photography uh, enthusiasts. Um, there may be the odd ebook reader, depending on where you are you'll probably bump into a Blackberry or two. So one of the easiest ways of getting started is to just find out what your what your learners have and increasingly this idea of BYOD or bring your own device uh, is becoming quite popular because of course it's much cheaper to implement than it is to get a school or a university to buy a class set of iPads or iPod touches or whatever. So first find out what your learners have. If you're working in a context where your learners have nothing but you have for example a fairly modern mobile phone there's still a lot you can do. So yeah, in terms of getting started, even, as I said, even with one device, your own device, there's an awful lot you can do. Um, if you have a fairly modern phone, it's going to be capable of recording audio, uh, recording video, taking photographs. Um, and giving it to the learners to experiment with will allow them to therefore produce audio, video and photographs, which can then be used in creative projects. So uh, with a variety of devices you may have your learners um, conducting audio or video interviews, editing those interviews, you may have them recording themselves, practicing their pronunciation, perhaps uh, reading aloud um, or slightly more creative projects like doing a little bit of research or presenting on a particular topic um, and allowing them to use these gadgets will of course give them a chance to rehearse and practice, rehearse, practice and edit until they're happy with what they're producing and that can be a very empowering thing indeed. So a lot of these simple tools which are built into modern phones um, can be of great use in the classroom. Um, in terms of where to go next, um, I think there are, there are a couple of things which I think are particularly important. The first thing is to ensure that the use of these gadgets and, and the kind of tasks that you have people doing with these gadgets is built fairly tightly into what you do over the year or the course of the course. So um, ensuring that, that the use of the technology is not a simple one-off or an occasional thing or a Friday afternoon thing but that in fact it becomes an intrinsic part of the, of the curriculum. So have a look at your course book or your syllabus or the materials you're working with and try to figure out where these creative productive um, phases might come in 
um, during your, your teaching with this particular group and, and try to build it in in a fairly consistent manner. The other possibility of course is to go mobile and to figure out exactly what your learners could do with their devices when they're outside the class. Um, getting them perhaps interested in reading um, blogs in English uh, on their mobile phone or, or their tablet computer or whatever. Um, perhaps showing them where they can get access to magazines in English or English newspapers or even English radio stations. There are quite a few apps for those uh, in the marketplace for Android and the uh, iTunes App Store. Um, so yeah, books, magazines, perhaps audio material. There's some fantastic BBC and Guardian podcasts available uh, in iTunes. Um, and perhaps for English learners, you might want to look at some of the podcast material produced by uh, Macmillan or the British Council, which is really very excellent. Um, so trying to perhaps just a smooth transition from using the gadgets in class to encouraging to them to use them outside the class. Of course, they're not going to do it all the time, but if you can get them perhaps listening to a little bit of English or reading a bit of English for half an hour a week on their gadget while they're sitting on a bus or something, then, you know, um, every little bit helps. Um, if you want to find out more, uh, you can certainly have a look at my colleague Nikki's blog, uh, it's emoderationskills.com. She's got uh, quite a few posts on mobile and handheld learning, and that's a really good place to start for a big picture um, idea of what's happening. There are plenty of blogs, of course, apart from hers, which deal with mobile learning and wikis too, and increasingly uh, communities of educators who are looking at things like the application of iPads in education, that kind of thing. If you're interested in more structured learning, have a look at our website and you'll see the address at the end of this video um, where you can find out about our M Learning in Practice course, which aims to equip teachers with the skills they need to get started with mobile and handheld learning in and out of class. So we hope you've enjoyed this first uh, EdTech Bytes video and uh, we'll be back next month with another one. We hope to see you here.